All right. We're going to start a new series here. Uh, welcome, everyone. We are uh, joining together to learn more about this thing called Microsoft Fabric. Tommy, hello. Welcome. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Doing well. It's the afternoon. I'm kind of uh, getting warmed in here. I've been learning a lot myself in Fabric, and we felt Tommy and I have been talking about this a lot. And we said, you know what? It would be wonderful to get other people on board with just doing simple little tasks and things around Microsoft Fabric. So that's what this is video is about. This is the introduction to our new series. We will be producing a lot more content around learning various tasks and features of Microsoft Fabric. Let's dive right in. So starting right off, um, this is our slide deck for today. We're going to do a couple quick slides before we actually do demos and real live, um, you know, building into the features themselves. So we'll just start with this and we'll move on from here. Beginning out with our talk here, we kind of wanted to just do a quick high level overview of what we think Fabric is. And how does this relate to what you already know and love around Power BI? So today, we have our known and beloved Power BI. We build data sets, we build workspaces, and we share those things out across the organization. There's a lot of technical pieces in there, and I'm literally doing just a bunch of hand-waving <laughs> around Power BI. It's an incredible tool. We love it very much. However, with the introduction of Fabric, you'll see all these other features that have been added here. Um, the, the One Lake, Data Factory, a new feature called Data Activator. And then we have all these other Synapse-based features that are being brought into the Power BI ecosystem. Now, I'm extremely excited for this because I've been building blob storage, which is kind of like one lake. I've been using Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse pipelines to build data flow movements and orchestrations. And, and I've that... been using all the, all the Synapse tools. So this is exciting to see everything comes together. Sorry, Tommy, what else no, are you gonna say? No worries. And that's the really important concept here, Mike, too, where none of these tool, tools are new. These are all uh, experiences and platforms that have already existed out there. The data engineering, data factory, Synapse and data explorer. Yeah. But the difference now here is it's all in one platform, all available in the Power BI service. And this I think is the very exciting part because I've been building this architecture for a number of years, working very much in Azure, and seeing how that joins into Power BI. To coin a phrase from the podcast that we use a lot is, is to act like the business and think like IT. All these other tools you see here, One Lake, Data Factory, Synapse, this stuff is all the IT functions that are being brought directly into a UI that the business works in. So we're very excited to see this. We're gonna dive in, we're gonna get deeper. Let's go on to our next slide. Quickly, to go talk a little bit further around how do we think about this new ecosystem and this new world. We think about all of our data sources and it could be anything you want. Power BI gives you a rich supply of other data sources. We're not really gonna address that, but we really do wanna focus on Power BI in the ecosystem has really had this Power Query, data modeling and serving reports. This is like your, your kind of three-step process here. You bring data in, you transform it, you build relationships and tables, and then you build out your reports. And that's a big uh, point here too, because if you think about a typical workflow too, you may have had a team that was already in evolving storing data and data lake storage and processing it in data factory or Databricks. You may never knew wasn't in Power BI, but uh, before it actually got loaded into Power BI into the Power BI models. Yeah, and we call all that effort that's being done. This is like Matthew uh, Maxim's. Uh, what is it? What's Roach's called? Roach's maximum. Roach's maximum, right? This is this is the the essential uh, portion of that, right? These are data transformations that happen in the data sources upstream of where we are. We never saw them. They were outside of our ecosystem. So we just kind of uh, were able to connect to sources, SQL servers, data warehouses. All that happened outside of Power BI. And I think this is the big game changer that we see as we look at more of what Fabric is doing for us as an organization. Now. Let's flip this same pattern over, right? We still have these same three blocks of information. We still have Power Query, like the load and transform is our equivalent. We have modeling of data, building tables and relationships together, and then we have the reporting aspect. So this is kind of how Tommy and I see the world as these new tools are being rolled out inside Fabric. You know, we have all these now rich IT-based supporting tools for data factory, Synapse Data Engineering, and one thing that's not on this list based on the Microsoft documentation, there's, ad, there's data flows Gen 2, which is still a Power BI product, but it lives in that loading and transforming space. 
And it's important to under, understand too that you may see this new diagram and see that one lake underneath where the Power BI model itself has uh, in a sense been demoted. And what's been promoted is this concept of Microsoft One Lake. Uh, it's the foundational data lake which all the Fabric services are built. If you're going to play in any of the services in Fabric, it's going to be built off of uh, One Lake. This is the unified location to store all the organizational data where all these experiences actually operate. Um, what Lake is the critical part of the Microsoft Fabric platform. The other thing I'll, I'll observe here is One Lake. Yes, it's like a service for you. It is a service. It, it spans different regions. It spans your blob storage accounts. It really does a really rich um, interaction of storing that information. But this is almost playing a play, taking a play directly out of what we see in data flows. When you talk about Synapse Data Engineering, Data Factory, or any of the Spark notebooks around data science, all of these platforms use a format called Delta, mm -hmm. Delta tables. And the magic or the secret sauce here is all of Microsoft's products are now using Delta. The Delta format, the lake storage format, is now being built directly into one lake, and it's going to be used directly in Azure Data Factory, Dataflows Gen 2, in all of the real-time engineering analytics, this is the magic secret sauce that Microsoft is really making a move here. And I think this is really what's going to move us forward. People are going to love this experience. And as we go through our training as well, so just you'll hear more about One Lake, but just for right now, just understand One Lake is really the key uh, uh, component that everything's going to flow from when all the services that we're going to build on top of. So how does this relate to you? What does this look like now moving forward in what do you do today and what will you do tomorrow? Well, we really feel like a lot of the core functionalities or the core roles that you use inside Power BI today are still the same. Our existing workflows around administration governing our Power BI environment, those do not change. We're gonna have some kind of role around a release manager, someone who's working to promote content from dev to prod. And then we're gonna have the standard content builder individuals, right? I'm building reports, I'm consuming reports, or I'm building data models. None of these workflows change inside Fabric. However, with Fabric, we get two new roles that we feel like are gonna be valuable, and these are two new individuals or workloads that we're now bringing into this ecosystem of Power BI. And so, while Microsoft is messaging this as a Fabric or it's an evolution of Power BI, I just really feel like this is Power BI that's being evolved. It's adding more capability. And it is important to know too, Mike, uh, just going along with that, yeah, there's a lot more to learn and there's a lot more you can expand your, your own knowledge. Um, but also even for the IT professionals, the administrators out there, uh, there's a whole other level of administration now. Uh, you've seen this, I'm sure, through some documentation, but IT, IT teams are playing more central role as they integrate more and more with the business including the business analysts and really it's getting everyone in the same room. I agree with that one hundred percent. All right, let's move on to our last couple slides here. Um, these are these workloads that we see. These are things that we're doing today. And so we wanted to just kind of explain who may be doing these things. So we're talking about workloads or work elements that happen inside Power BI. This is a small team that we see here, but this could be a large team. And this scales from a small business unit to many large business units. We're talking about these things called a persona. We have people that are going to administer, and there may be someone who's doing the administration or the governance or releasing content from different workspaces. We may have a person in our organization that's really focused on building the data models or building the reports. And then we may have a whole bunch of people that are just consuming reports. They're not really interested in creating their own content. They want someone to produce it for them. And then now this is that our, where our new role sit. There's going to be a new team of people or new workloads that are going to be focusing on doing the data engineering. And I think of the two, I see the data engineer being a very valuable role uh, inside our Power BI space. And then, you know, I think we'll also find value with data scientists. But I think for me right now, the compelling story is the data engineer. And it's important to note here, this doesn't mean you're hiring someone new at your organization if you adopt Fabric. This is something if you want to take up, uh, Mike, you said it really well, it, uh, it's a great workload and uh, another great skill part of the uh, your arsenal of what you know and uh, what you already apply today. It's kind of getting on board now with what's already going on in so many organizations when it comes to data engineering and a lot of the 
uh, frustrations and the limitations we've had with Power BI is now available for us and now available to you uh, within the Fabric platform. That's another excellent point, Tommy, and I'll actually echo that as well. If you love working with Power BI reports and you're thinking about being the report consumer, you can easily move yourself into be building your own reports. That's a role that you would want to apply. So getting training, educating yourself into that next level, this really is a career path from report consumer mm -hmm. to report builder to data modeler, maybe into data engineer, and maybe ultimately all the way on to data scientist. These are all skills that I think you can grow into now with Fabric, which I think is a great idea. With that, I think we're all done. We're at our last slide here, hopefully. There we go. Thank you very much for listening to our introduction around Fabric. From here, we're going to start doing a lot more practical examples around building things in Fabric. So stay tuned. We're going to try and put out one video a day to continue adding additional content around how do you work with Fabric? How do you turn things on? So with that, thank you all very much, and we'll catch you next time.